an event that became a true breakthrough in the world of art. Fame of a provincial artist that his metropolitan colleagues could not come to terms with. A technique that keeps amazing art lovers even in a hundred years. The autumn of 1880 was marked by a real explosion in the art world of the Russian Empire. Ukrainian artists of Greek origin, Arhip Kuinji, who had already been known at the time, organized his own exhibition in the Society for Art Encouragement, where his recent work Moonlit Night on the Dnipro was presented. One could say it was a typical exhibition many of which were held in the Russian Federation and around the world, if not for one significant nuance. When he presented Moonlit Night on the Dnipro, it was the first case in Russian and Ukrainian and Western art when just one painting was exhibited. Not everyone supported those innovative ideas of his. Many asked, how is it then you can only present just one painting? Nevertheless, in some way it fascinated practically all the visitors of the exhibition. The effect of that exhibition was akin to a bomb explosion. There was a long line of people who wanted to get into the hall where the painting was being exhibited, amazed by what they saw and refusing to believe that something like that was possible without the use of artificial lighting, visitors searched for a lamp behind the painting. But there wasn't one. As a professor at the Academy of Arts, Pavel Chistakov noted, Kuinji incited such a storm of delight. Well done! There is another interesting fact that testifies to the level of the artist and the value of the painting. Moonlit Night on the Dnipro of 1880 was bought straight from the artist studio by Grand Duke Konstantin Konstantinovich for a large, at the time, sum of 5,000 rubles. The famous writer Turgenev, sincerely impressed by the extraordinary beauty of the work, contributed greatly to that. This success was made possible thanks to the painting at the Sumi Regional Art Museum Moonlit Night. It is known that the most popular painting by Archip Kuinji Moonlit Night on the Dnipro, created in 1880, had a number of author's copies and interpretations. In addition, it was so popular that it was reproduced repeatedly under the personal guidance of Kuinji himself, using the oleography technique in large quantities. From 1882 and until the artist's death, the full-scale copy of Moonlit Night on the Dnipro remained in his own collection, in his studio. After his death, the original painting and the author's copy were transferred to the Quinji Society of Artists, upon the will of Quinji himself. A bit later it was bought by the Lopunov family, and from the family it ended up being displayed in the Tretyakov Gallery. There are copies of this famous work in many museums, particularly in Simferopol and Sevastopol regional art museums. There is also a copy of this famous work in the Kyiv Art Gallery, where it is named Night on the Don River. It is also known that there are quite a large number of sketches that he made in order to find a certain angle or a particular mood to paint another work for the author's copy. Generally speaking, all the works of Arhip Kuinji are divided into chapters, into periods of his creativity. 
He started with large-scale panoramic landscapes, which included moonlit night on the Dnipro. It was, so to say, his effective entry into the art of the 19th century. He painted moonlit night on the Dnipro in 1880. Our sketch of this moonlit night is right from that period, the 1880s, where he, while working on this large-scale painting, found these color combinations that gave the effect that would captivate the audiences of that time, and which it does to this day. You can see all these nuances of combined green, phosphoric and white in our work. It is a sketch or a draft of this very composition. In our work there is a bank of the Dnipro. It is rocky, hills are visible there. And at the same time there are some parts of the river with a reflection of the moon on the water surface. And the large work is a panorama of the Dnipro River depicting the breadth of the night. So this is simply an example of what could be possible in a large painting. The painting Moonlit Night on the Dnipro, which is in the collection of the Sumi Regional Art Museum, is the most comparable with Night on the Dawn from the collection of the Kyiv Art Gallery. But while they're generally similar, both depict a late night and bright moonlight that mystically flows about the smooth river surface. There are still quite a lot of differences between them. Queen G was very concerned about the topic of painting moonlight. He explored those special effects, those special states of nature numerous times, searching for a special nuance, a special unique approach, something typical, something that characterizes a work as one that could become part of a series from the so-called Moon series. In art, a series is a number of works united by the same topic, the same plot, certain visual science with the purpose of exploring something in particular, to accomplish a certain purpose. Quinji explored landscape transformation under moonlight, optical changes in familiar things under unusual physical conditions. There are several series among the works of the Mariupol artist. One of them is the Moon series. There is also a Sun series. We're going to talk about that one in the next episode. Quinji's Moon series continued until the end of his life. It started with his early paintings, done under the influence of Ivazovsky and German Romantics. For example, Waves of the 1860s and the previously mentioned Tatar Sakla in Crimea. Then there were the St. Isaac's Cathedral under the moon of 1869, on the island of Malam of 1876, evening in Ukraine of 1878, moonlit night on the Dnipro of 1880, of course, and many more, different years, different landscapes. But all these works are part of one series, the Moon series. A number of signs indicate that the Sumi painting is also in this series. The most important thing is probably the infinity effect. It's the space that we immediately notice after seeing the work for the first time. Next is the typical in these works, for him, the bird's eye view, or perspective from a high point, which helps expand the view of the landscape very far up to the horizon. Next, the compositions are built on a parallel perspective. Generally, all compositions in the Moon series are static which fully reflects Quinji's ideas about the landscapes he painted. He mainly used a black or a very dark blue color gamut, which contrasts with this light phosphoric hue, 
which he uses to paint the moon and its reflections on the water. Что контрастирует с таким светлым фосфорическим оттенком которым он пишет луну а, или эти лунные блики на воде. Причем, что характерно, не у черного. What is also typical, it is almost impossible to find identical shades in both black and dark blue. То, что мы видим на этих полотнах, не является... What we see on these canvases is not a fill. It is rather the art of painting. These are the finest colored nuances that are, nevertheless, laid out by the artist in hues of black and dark blue gamuts. There is always one light source and two or three bright reflections at most. The work itself, even though it has darkened significantly over time and does not represent what we could have seen during its creation and in the years of Quincy's life, still actively emits light. Even now it still represents this source of light, the moon, at such a contrast that it seems as if we are not looking at the moon, but at a large flood light, the light of which spreads over this landscape and reflects from the water. Like all the works from the Moon series, Moonlit Night is in the area of search of the way of luminism, the depiction of complex light and effects in compositions. However, the work at the Sumi Art Museum is significantly different from the Moonlit Night on the Dawn and other works in the series. So what makes this work in the Sumi Museum unique? First of all, I must say that no other work from Quinji's Moon series repeats the main work Moonlit Night on the Dnipro exactly. It must be said that Quinji's work at the Sumi Regional Art Museum has all the signs of a complete independent work. And not a sketch is indicated in some books in Quinji's work. This is an unbelievably beautiful spatial composition, which was undoubtedly created by Quinji with reliance on full-scale sketches. Если сравнивать ее с музыкальным темпом, то, пожалуй, можно было бы сравнить ее с Адажо. Это немыслимой красоты пространственная композиция, которая выполнена, безусловно, Куинджи с опорой на натурные зарисовки. It is well known that Quinji was very attentive to nature, and he carefully cited all the places he visited to then paint his works in all states from morning to night. Свои работы во всех состояниях с утра и до вечера. As for the conditions and possibilities of painting such a work, it is important to note that Quinji made his works by carefully studying the nature in painting in the open air. Nevertheless, the creative method of the artist was based on finishing them in the studio. He finished painting most of his works in his studio. Both Moonlit Night on the Dnipro and Moonlit Night became a landmark, a milestone in the life and art of Arhip Quinji. It was the first work the artist exhibited after the scandalous split with the Wanderers. Those who contributed to Quinji's ascent to the artistic Olympus became his biggest critics after he took a prominent place there. He was accused of monotony, primitiveness, the use of cheap effects and secrets, almost mystical techniques. An anonymous newspaper article, which was later found to be written by his society colleague, sculptor Peter Klodt, became his last straw. In later 1879, Arhip Quinji withdrew from the Wanderers. However, this separation, more artistic than physical, was outlined even earlier. Придя в искусство в эпоху реализма, когда были актуальны жанровые полотна на бытовую тему повседневного... He became an artist in the era of realism, when paintings of everyday life about the hard lives of the people made by the wanderers or paintings of academicians with their artificial and somewhat synthetic classical topics 
and subjects were relevant. At the same time, he took a step back. He returns to the era of Romanticism, realistic Romanticism, perhaps. But he also drastically changed the accent, which is a colossal achievement of his. He shifted the accent from outward showiness and obvious pathos and beauty of works of the Romantics to the inner character, to inner emotionality. These landscapes are extremely spectacular and occasionally even epic. But at the same time, they contain so much emotion and personal touch in them that perhaps no other artist could paint such a landscape. Його називають майстром епічного пейзажу, але, наприклад, той же самий Шишкін теж майстер епічного пейзажу. He is called the master of epic landscapes. But Shishkin, for example, is also a master of epic landscapes. But Shishkin had a lot of detail in his paintings, while Quinji used the technique of spots, the effect of the night, the moon, and the color spots that appear in the Sun series, various shades of red. That is innovation. He was not generally recognized at that time. Куинджи был необыкновенно предан живописи, и всю свою жизнь он... Куинджи был unusually devoted to painting, and while he made good money all his life, he devoted all his time to studying nature, and such an important issue as how to depict this nature by means of painting at present. At the same time, he spent all his life fighting back critics, who accused him of manipulating paints with chemicals. In the end, the artist got tired of fighting off the attacks of his envious colleagues, and in 1882 he secluded himself in his workshop. The world waited 20 years for his next work. The next episode is about what Quinji had been doing all that time, and how he shocked the secular society.